Welcome back. And of course, as was promised earlier in the show, we have been joined by the High Commissioner of India to Belize. Uh, we're joined by His Excellency Sujan Chinoy. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning, Good morning. and thank you very much for having me uh -huh. on your show. I want to uh, convey on behalf of the government and the people of India our very best wishes to all your viewers. Mm -hmm. I also want to wish you um, much luck and, and, and success in the future because I believe you've just celebrated your 20th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, let's move into uh, a little bit of your background. You presented your credentials in December and uh, obviously what it means for you to be an ambassador to a country in this region. Well, um, we live in the digital age mm -hmm. when passwords are more important than passports. Mm -hmm. And I can safely say that the world today is uh, imploding. Mm -hmm. It's much more compacted. And the tyranny of geography is no longer an impediment to building better relations. Mm -hmm. So although India and Belize are in different parts of the world, in different corners of the world, we are very close to one another. We have shared perceptions, we have shared values. Uh, to use a phrase I used to use in Australia, mm -hmm. we share the three C's. We share cricket, commonwealth, and the curry. Ah. But what is more important today is the C of commerce, the mm -hmm. C of the compradors, the C of communication, mm -hmm. and above all, the C of community building between the people of Belize and India. Mm -hmm. So I don't see geography uh, or distance as an impediment anymore, and I'm really excited being in this part of the world, particularly mm -hmm. in Belize. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about your station. In Mexico. Um, where your station? I'm resident and, in Mexico. And how does that impact the work of uh, the uh, um, embassy? Well, as you know, I'm the non-resident High Commissioner of India to Belize, with residence in Mexico. But we have an excellent honorary consul general here in Mr. Arun Hochandani. Some of you may know him. And so he's been... Uh, uh, doing a great job here and supporting the uh, High Commissioners out of uh, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that as an impediment either. This is already my second visit. I was here first in, in December to present my credentials. Mm -hmm. And that was as uh, quickly as I got the appointment for doing so. And I'm already here in February. Mm -hmm. And this time I come with uh, the purpose of, uh, of uh, visiting the St. John's College, among other things, and inaugurating the India-Belize Friendship Computer Center. On behalf of the government of uh, India, I am uh, donating 50 computers mm -hmm. uh, to the St. John's College uh, to promote our friendship and to share our best practices mm -hmm. and also to give you an idea about uh, information technology for which India is uh, well known. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, uh, the very happy augury of having um, Mr. Ashok Chan a very distinguished uh, senior police officer uh, from India who was earlier the additional commissioner of police in Delhi and who headed the special cell, I believe, for seven years. He has come here under the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program. He will be here for one year uh, on loan to the government of Belize entirely uh, at the disposal of his uh, superiors here to act as an advisor to the Commissioner of Police in Belize. And this is our way under the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program mm -hmm. of sharing our best practices with friends. Now, I, that, that's a very important point because I think when uh, country to country, uh, in, in a matter of country to country relations, you usually look at areas where uh, assistance is most necessary. And uh, obviously, you have identified that within the police department itself. What are some of the other areas that when you uh, look at Belize in general um, that you can see the expertise of the Indians being most useful? Well, under the same program, mm -hmm. uh, the ITEC program as the acronym goes, we offer 11 scholarships to various people in Belize mm -hmm. in fields ranging from accounting to auditing to various other uh, technical areas. Um, often to people who are serving in government and have some years of experience. And so this allows us to take people out from Belize to India yeah. and to show them the progress that we've made back home and again to share some of our best practices. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of scholarships that we operate for uh, officials in 
bellies. And since we share the language, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, extremely convenient for yeah. people from Belize to go to India. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it so important for you and you, for your government for, uh, to strengthen the connection between Belize and India? Belize, as you know, is um, an old friend of uh, India's. We have a shared legacy, we have a shared past, we are part of the Commonwealth, we are both members of the United Nations, and at a time when, as I said, the world is much more compacted uh, and also a much more level playing field, uh, we cannot think of uh, one another as distant neighbors. There's no such concept as distant neighbors. Um, the, the, the tyranny of geography is, is no longer in play. Mm -hmm. We are actually in each other's neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And what happens in one part of the world, uh, it directly impacts on what happens in another part of the world. We have seen this in the case of the global financial and economic crisis. We see this in the case of new threats that are emerging, such as terrorism and uh, cyber threats. Uh, these transcend boundaries. Um, often there are no rules of the road, and often you are dealing with non-state actors. So when you look at the economic front, when you look at the security front, when you look at uh, global communications, you're really looking at a, a much more compacted world. Mm -hmm. So for us, Belize is very important. We consider Belize a very friendly country. Uh, you are aware of the fact that we have uh, a small but vibrant uh, Indian community here, uh, not uh, more than about 1,200 people, um, but they are uh, acting as uh, very important bridges of friendship. And then, of course, there is your very substantive uh, um, community of East Indians, which, mm -hmm. which is fully integrated in Belize society, but they do share a little bit um, uh, in common with, uh, with us, uh, some would say, uh, a great deal. Yeah. Um, but they are uh, entirely uh, Belizeans and fully integrated here. Uh, there are a number of reasons, therefore, why we would wish to build bridges. Mm -hmm. Our soft power is, is another one. Um, Gandhi's concepts and values of ahimsa, that's non-violence and truth. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, uh, Indian films that uh, reach out to a very large part of the world. Yeah. So, so uh, there are many things uh, about India that we'd like to share with, uh, with Belize. Now, have you had the opportunity? There are pockets uh, within the entire country of Belize. As a matter of fact, you have uh, villages uh, named after places um, in India and maintain a strong uh, Indian heritage. Have you had the opportunity to engage um, at that level? Well, um, as soon as I finish this uh, show, I will uh, obviously go back to my hotel and have my breakfast, uh, without doubt, and then <laughs> catch a flight to Punta Gorda. Mm -hmm. And that will be my first exposure oh. uh, to the larger yeah. uh, East Indian community. They have as, a very as you put strong it here. East Indian. Yeah. There's a very strong presence there, and I'm excited about meeting people uh, from that part of your country. Now, talking uh, on, on a personal level, what are some of your passions? When you uh, take on a particular appointment, um, what do you find to be your area of passion? Well, this is a, a much more competitive world, as you know, today. Mm -hmm. um, gone are the days of traditional diplomacy when people said uh, diplomacy was largely about uh, uh, protocol and alcohol. <laughs> uh, and the, the proportions uh, varied uh, depending on your own proclivities. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a much more demanding and competitive world. Diplomats today are far more accountable. Uh, they are no longer distant. Uh, they don't have the luxury of being ambassadors extraordinary and plenipotentiaries that uh, come home once in two years or three years, mm -hmm. journeying for three months on a ship. These days, uh, it's all instant. You have to stay ahead of the curve. You have to stay ahead of the media mm -hmm. that often reports on developments uh, much earlier than you can, even in the country of your posting. Uh, you have to be fully cognizant of the economic, political, and social changes taking place around you. Yeah. Uh, so all this makes uh, the job of a diplomat uh, very uh, important. And the ability to communicate uh, with not only your people, but the people of the country uh, where you reside and to ensure that there is no lack of communication between these two. Yeah. But now, I mean, in terms of uh, perhaps we've had ambassadors who perhaps are more interested in working with crime and violence, for example, or some of the social issues, um, various different areas. But what, what, what uh, do you find 
um, is a better connection when you have a particular posting, whether it's Mexico or Belize, that you would like to invest time and energy in? In my case, uh, speaking individually, I've put in 32 years mm -hmm. in the Indian Foreign Service and I've traveled far and wide. My specialization, and everyone must have specializations mm -hmm. in a competitive world, uh, in my case, it is uh, uh, China, mm -hmm. and, and, and I began with the Chinese language. Mm -hmm. I have been posted uh, 30 years ago in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and then on to Peking, which was a much different China in those days. Yeah. Um, it wasn't uh, the China that you see today. Mm -hmm. um, much more sedate pace uh, uh, defined Peking mm -hmm. in those uh, times. I have been um, subsequently in New York at our permanent mission to the United Nations. Mm -hmm. I've served in the Gulf. Uh, in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, I have served in the Asia Pacific in Australia and for more than five years as the Consul General of India in Shanghai. That was about 12 years ago. Okay. So off and on I've put in uh, about 20 years of my time including time at headquarters dealing with the People's Republic of China. Mm -hmm. Indeed uh, this is uh, a world of specialization and, mm -hmm. and demands are also made on you accordingly. My last stint in Delhi uh, was what I would deem uh, yet another uh, part of my diversification mm -hmm. because you must also have a little bit of uh, diversification in your in your specialization and I spent four years as the key uh, policy person mm -hmm. uh, in the policy wing of the National Security Council uh, mm -hmm. Secretariat which is embedded in the Prime Minister's office in India mm -hmm. I was dealing with all external uh, national security threats um, and uh, so therefore that uh, added uh, yet another dimension to my own uh, experience uh, okay. and uh, uh, potential for contribution in the future. Yeah. Now, um, I guess in in terms of your your passions and stuff, moving now to uh, taking on your portfolio, uh, Belize. W what uh, is your motivation in terms of making sure that you're building uh, stronger links? especially um, between Belize and India? Because people look at the size of India and then they look at Belize and they go like, okay, uh, you know, in terms of size, do we matter? And how do you make people understand that connections are important regardless of size? Well, I, I think that's very important. It's all regardless uh, of your uh, uh, economy, the size of your economy, the number of people, because that's not the way to, to conduct international relations. No two countries are going to be identical. And everyone speaks with uh, an equal voice. So we are all members of the United Nations. Uh, there's only one vote there. So, so this is not something that uh, should come uh, in the way of building better relations. Uh, India, yes, is a country with one point, uh, nearly 1.2 billion people. Mm -hmm. We are uh, the fourth largest uh, economy in the world in terms of purchasing power parity with uh, a GDP of, uh, in PPP terms, of 4.5 trillion US dollars. We have uh, 550 million people below the age of 25, which is going to pay us rich uh, demographic uh, uh, dividends in the future when the entire world, and particularly parts of uh, Europe, um, the United States, Russia, elsewhere are aging. Even China is aging. There are people that say that China might age before it gets really rich in terms of the, the demography. And uh, in the case of India, therefore, uh, we have uh, a country that is changing very rapidly. Uh, we have uh, been growing quite well, uh, averaging more than 6% uh, for many years. Uh, we bounced back after the first uh, global uh, financial and economic crisis with an 8% growth rate. Uh, the 2012 growth rate is a little more moderate, mm -hmm. at about 5.4%. 5, 5. Uh, but expected to bounce back to uh, six and a half or seven percent very soon in the next year or two. I think the uh, World Bank uh, or IMF uh, estimates for 2014 for the Indian economy are close to to seven percent. So the fundamentals of the Indian economy are very good. And when we look at other countries, uh, we uh, ha we go by the the Indian philosophy of, uh, if I may quote a saying from Sanskrit. It's Vasudeva Kutumbakam. All the peoples of the world are one family. Uh, when we look at our region, when we look at the broader uh, international arena, we are guided by India's thoughts uh, and philosophies, which uh, are inclusive. 
that we're uh, all and not exclusive. Time. We are all in it together. We, we sail or sink together. So when we can, we'd like to share mm -hmm. our, uh, not only our best practices, but also provide whatever help and assistance mm -hmm. we can. Belize, for us, has been a very good friend. Um, as I said, you're not a distant neighbor. Uh, Belize has also supported India in international fora. Uh, we have uh, a good political understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, there are very friendly vibes between the people of India and the people of Belize. What I'd like to see happen more often is uh, a, a, a much greater exchange of visits between the two mm -hmm. countries. I'd like to see more people from Belize go out to India to see things for, for themselves. I'd like people from India to come here and perhaps also invest. Now we have uh, 121 billion US dollars of outbound Indian investment uh, that has taken place in the last 10 years. Are you going to meet with... And we uh, want some of that to come yeah. uh, to Belize as well. Are you going to meet with uh, representatives of Beltrade, those who are uh, seeking foreign investment, to be able to see how you can establish a link? Yes, I'd like uh, to meet more people here. And as I said, I've just started off. Yeah. So I will build on this further. But you asked me earlier about my passions. One of my, my earliest passions is horse riding. Oh. And uh, um, so apart from all this... Will that be uh, a part of your Punta Gorda visit? Well, I don't know. Uh -huh. If there's a horse there, I'd like to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I must tell you, I, uh -huh. many years ago, I, I was roped in uh, at the age of 20 when I had a, 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 a beard and I, I looked fitter and, and younger. <laughs> I was asked to act in a movie, mm -hmm. uh, and I oh. did. Um, but the role they gave me was not that of a, a diplomat. They asked me to be a bandit uh, because of that beard and, and uh, you know, the looks that go with it. Uh -huh. and, and, and it was all about riding a horse. So uh, riding is a, is a passion. Oh, nice. um, and one of the first things I did in, in Mexico was to, to step out and go to the Sierra Madre mm -hmm. uh, and, and go to a ranch, take a horse and go up in the mountains. Oh, that's but I fell off the horse. <laughs> yes, this was... Oh, so uh, you love horseback riding, but you're not necessarily good at it. No, I'm very good. But <laughs> then but, how did you but fall But show, show me one good rider that's not that's falling right. off. It's so the important it makes thing you is humble. to get back on, get back right? It on. makes you humble, and the, the, the important thing is to get back on again and to stay Shows safe. Shows my limited experience right? in horseback riding. <laughs> but, uh, but it's very important because it, it teaches you to be humble. Yes. It's good to get thrown off track once in a while. Uh, helps you to regain your bearings. Mm -hmm. uh, helps you to assess where you stand, where you want to go. Mm -hmm. What you should do to, to not to repeat those mistakes again. Yeah. So now, there's a lesson in everything. You, um, you're making, uh, you said earlier, a very significant contribution uh, to school here in Belize uh, City. Uh, how did that link get formed and why is this an important venture for uh, the embassy? You mean the St. John's College? St. John's yeah. College, yeah. Well, um, uh, as you know, a very large number of uh, the people of Belize do reside in Belize City. Mm -hmm. uh, and a number of your leaders and your eminent uh, intellectuals and political leaders and others, CEOs, uh, all come from the St. John's uh, College. Yeah. So this time we made a beginning with uh, a particular uh, educational institution, but that does not limit us yeah. in the future. We would like to, to do what we can um, within the uh, limits of our own resources, and we can uh, fan out and, and link up with other institutions. When that. do you make that presentation? It's on, it's on the 14th. It's on the 14th. Okay. So it's a love gift. <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, an expression of our friendly feelings uh, for the people of Belize. Excellent. And uh, we, we hope to learn from, from St. John's College and their experience uh, yeah. uh, in the bargain as well. And as you mentioned before, from the very beginning of this conversation, technology is such an important tool for us to be able to keep up globally. And uh, a high school getting an advantage with that is always a great opportunity. Yes, education yeah. is extremely important, and that is what we emphasize in India as well, mm -hmm. um, because we have a very large number of young people, as I said, mm -hmm. and the key uh, to their better utilization in the future will lie in education, because it's one thing to have uh, a youthful population of 550 million people uh, below the age of 25, and to be able to say that they will all be of uh, the working age uh, uh, for a while and will contribute to uh, economic growth mm -hmm. and progress. Uh, but you have to but the hard them. part is, is, is lies in equipping them mm -hmm. with the right skills, the right training, uh, so that they're not frustrated and they can be part of, uh, of the nation's progress, nation building. 
All right, Ambassador, my final question has to do with uh, what you're looking forward to experiencing in Belize. Um, I'm discovering the country. I'm uh, actually very excited about meeting people. Mm -hmm. As I said, this is Any my particular second visit. food, music yeah. area? Uh, no, I, have you I, been to the touristy areas? Not quite. Okay. I haven't been to, for instance, uh, mm. uh, San Pedro okay. Island, which I'm told is very interesting. Uh, but I hope to have that opportunity. Um, I'm currently focused on getting some substantive work done. I must tell you, I had excellent meetings mm -hmm. during my first visit uh, in December okay. when I presented my credentials to the Governor General. He was very kind and generous mm -hmm. uh, in giving me uh, a fair bit of his time. Mm -hmm. uh, I also had the honor to, to pay my respects to the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And I met a number of other senior dignitaries. This time around, I had uh, excellent meetings yesterday uh, with the ministers of health mm -hmm. and the minister of national defense, uh, national security, um, and, and, and their CEOs. So I'm really meeting more people. Mm -hmm. um, I've made new friends today, two more. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're always welcome, welcome back, back when you come back again. And I'm, I'm really delighted to be here. <laughs> yeah. So there will be time uh, for visits to uh, areas of tourism, yeah. etc. Well, first thing Pun first. Punta Gorda is beautiful. It's one of my favorite parts of the country. So yeah. that's that's still an experience in itself that yeah. you have to look forward and to. And all that you mentioned about food, etc. I might discover some of it today. Ah. I'm looking forward to I some music suggest, and some dancing too. I suggest dancing some too, cocoon right? cabbage for lunch today if you're in Punta Gorda. All right. <laughs> well, I'll take your word all for right. that. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, it's a pleasure meeting you and mm -hmm. sitting down and talking with you about uh, the connections between India and Belize. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's been a great delight and privilege for me. Once again, thank you very much for having me here and all the very best to your viewers. Okay. And it's not too late in the year, so a very happy new year as well. <laughs> all the best for 2013. Excellent. All right, we are going to go ahead now and take our final break, and when we come back, we'll have our wrap up, so stay tuned.